Hey, don't be confused, you're not on my second channel, you are on the main channel, but a link to the second one is in the description down below. I am in front of my computer today because I want to answer the question, do braces change your face and show you some progress pictures of my journey. Here, what noise do potatoes make? So I've seen this question being asked a lot, uh, will braces change your face? The short answer is yes, <laughs> but I don't just want to tell you, I also want to show you. So let's take a look at some pa comparison pictures uh, that I have. These ones will show the before state, so before I had any sort of operations, procedures or braces. Then the second set of images is from before I got braces, but after I got SARP, surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion and then the third set of pictures is actually just from yesterday so after having braces for six months okay so let's take a look so i'm still going through the journey but already my face has changed so i'm going to start off then by showing you how the teeth have moved so then it's easier to understand how the or how my face um, has changed as a result of the movement of the teeth so as i say this first set of pictures here is before i had any procedures done you can see that the palette is very narrow it's also very pointed and because my top jaw is underdeveloped the front teeth flare out a lot to create a camouflaged underbite so that the top teeth still sit in front of the bottom teeth but it's having to flare a lot in order to compensate for the size of the top jaw. You can also see as well that the uh, teeth are very flared out also towards the back so it's not just the ones at the front although the front is the worst. This is also before I had all of my wisdom teeth removed as well and you'll see on the bottom jaw here that it's not quite so bad in terms of the flare but it's definitely more crooked you can see a lot more grooves there and in terms of the flare um, where the top teeth tilt outwards the bottom teeth tilt inwards and you can see that especially again at the bottom front teeth to create that concealed underbite and then this middle picture here or these uh, middle pictures are from when i had all my wisdom teeth removed and after i had the rapid palatal expansion so you can see then that the palette is already um, much wider than it was previously. These little bits of uh, redness, I actually never noticed that, <laughs> but that's from the palatal expansion device, which is fixed in with molar bands, which are incredibly uncomfortable. I'll leave a link in the description down below to a video where I talk a little bit more about molar bands and spacers, that um, painful experience. <laughs> but again, you can see that the, the palette is already much wider there. The front teeth, there's still a little bit of a gap here, but before I got the braces, while the, the palate was being expanded, the front teeth already moved to close any gap that was created by the palatal expansion. So I did expand a lot more than just a small space here, but the teeth have already moved into that space, which is good. You can see as well that without having had braces, the flare on the front teeth has again already improved quite a lot, but there's this sort of V-shaped angle which is definitely still quite prominent here. And on the bottom jaw as well, I always forget to mention that I did have a bottom jaw expander as well, which I sort of turned or expanded a lot more slowly than the top teeth. It didn't need to be expanded quite as much, but I still had that as well, which is why you'll still um, notice a little bit of movement here as well. But for the most part, the teeth still are quite crooked because again, it didn't have the braces and the bottom expansion device looks a bit like a holly retainer. So it has this um, acrylic plastic part in the middle, which shapes to the form of the existing form of the teeth. So that's why they're still quite crooked there. And most of the improvement then is on the palate, the top teeth. And then these third set of pictures then again are from yesterday. So you can see that the top arch is already so much nicer and smoother. And actually this is really nice to see because um, even in the last couple of weeks, so earlier on when I had braces, this was a lot more sort of angled. It was a lot more like a trapeze shape where you could very clearly see like almost sort of corners on the sides here. And then it was very straight at the front, but I can see that it's already starting to round out, which is nice. And you can, if you look really close so you can even see here and here just the way that the wire's bending, how that is still a little bit of an angle rather than a nice smooth curve. And again, looking at the front teeth, that tilt has improved even more in terms of flaring outwards and also in terms of the angle of the teeth 
the V shape isn't so strong anymore. In this picture you can barely see it but when I feel it with my teeth um, there's definitely still that V shape so there's a little bit to go there. Again I'm only six months into the braces so that's fine. And then on the bottom jaw, this is then when you start to see some alignment happening here. So that's nice, especially with this tooth here that has the filling. You can see it's already straightened out quite a lot there, which is nice. Again, in the front teeth, you can see that the tilt and again, the, the matching V shape is not quite as pronounced as it used to be. And what you can also see here as well, that there is where there seems to be a small gap in the teeth from when I was expanding that bottom jaw. And that's actually shifted a little bit further to in between these two teeth here. And you can see that there's no real visible gap here. So that's how my arches have changed. Let's take a look at the teeth from the front and sides. The order is the same again, this is before anything, this is after the wisdom teeth removal and expansion, and then this is from yesterday. If we start with the top teeth, the, one of the, the first things that I certainly have been noticing is that before I had any sort of surgery, the, the alignment was off. So the top jaw was more in my right direction or left on this picture, and the bottom jaw was more on the left on my direction, <laughs> um, right in the picture here, so you can see that slant there for one thing. That pretty much um, still carried through to this sort of interim picture here after the expansion. You can see though that the terms of the v-shaped tilt on the teeth here that it is already starting to improve there where we created the gap. The teeth are already moving into that space quite nicely. Also, there's a cross bite here where this tooth sits behind the bottom jaw. And then after the expansion, it's a bit more on a level sort of positioning, but obviously the teeth aren't touching because this, isn't, this still is not an ideal bite. So that's me trying to bite down as much as I possibly can. And only this little bit on the front teeth are actually making contact. But again, that's fine because we're still in the process. This. And then in the third picture here, and what you can maybe see from me talking now, here is where I have the bite turbos put in. And the reason why they're so big is because since my teeth were originally a concealed underbite, so uh, again, the teeth were very tilted. This is the, the front teeth that were still on the top, or sorry, this is the top teeth that were still in the front of the bottom teeth here. But once the tilt start to correct and untilt, they need to move. And if there's no space, for this movement, then the teeth will just get stuck and they'll never actually swap places. So that's why I need these bite turbos there to make space for the teeth to actually change positions and also to try and prevent damage for when the only the front teeth are making contact. Before I got my bite turbos, I did get a little bit of a chip in the inside of one of my teeth, which I'm very unhappy about. Again, I made a video about that, which I'll put in the description also down below. And what you also will notice here as well, and another reason for needing the turbo bites, is that as the tilt of the teeth correct, then they become longer, or the illusion is that they're longer or higher up in the front. So you can see here also um, by the line of the teeth and also by the wire, that it's coming down at the front. The bottom teeth are significantly long, uh, sorry, the front teeth are significantly longer than the teeth at the sides. And similarly on the bottom jaw, you can see a lot more prominently here, there's like an arch at the front where those teeth are much taller. So the bite, the bite turbos again are to protect from those teeth uh, touching and making all that damage in contact. And with the braces over time, these teeth should be pushed back down into the gums so that they are at a reasonable length compared to all of the other teeth. And I'm quite glad about that as well because the way that my teeth wear, I've got quite a bit of recession of the gum in the front teeth, which unfortunately you can't see here um, just because of the way that my lip is the retractor. So again, there's, there's still a lot of movement and a lot of different directions to do there. And then if we look at the side view, again, this is much easier than to see the slant that I was talking about where both the, the top and the bottom teeth tilt to make that concealed underbite. Here you can see that it's a bit more of an edge to edge bite as the, the teeth have starting to move on their own. And then here, again, it's even straighter still. There's still a bit to go there. But comparing this picture and this picture, I would say there's quite a bit of a change there. And you can even see on these two side teeth that the slant is also less than it was before. Great, so now that we've had a look at how my teeth have changed and started to align, let's take a look at the impact that that has had on my face. So let's take a look at my face when it's relaxed. If 
we take a look then at this third picture set, um, you can see here that when my lips are relaxed, I'm actually currently not able to keep my lips together or keep my lips closed, which wasn't the case previously. This is partly because of those bite turbos being so high. I only have them in this picture, so the lips are physically further apart from one another. But it's also because that concealed underbite has been taken away, my lips no longer have that sort of tooth bridge to support the lip structure and close that gap. I do have a video coming out soon uh, that talks a little bit about that because when I'm awake I can keep my lips closed consciously but when I'm asleep it's really difficult for me to keep my lips closed so I do now get dry mouth and drooling simultaneously so subscribe to the channel if you want to see a video coming out about that soon in terms of how to prevent dry mouth and drooling at night time. Now if you look a little bit closer at the face shape in this first picture here before I had any procedures done at all this looks to me significantly rounder I've been told that I've got more of an oval shaped face because I guess the height is larger than the width but it does seem quite round here in comparison to the way that it is now. The chin also has a bit of a point to it. It is rounded right at the very bottom but it's generally got a little bit of a point to the chin. Moving on to the middle picture here, this is after the, ex the palatal expansion was done but I don't have any bite turbos in here. It's also after I got my wisdom teeth removed. And here, the hollows of the cheekbones appear more prominent to me. Now that might also be due to the lighting but also when I look in the mirror or the hollow in my cheekbones does seem to be a little bit more prominent than it was before. You'll notice as well that my face seems to be longer now and it seems to be um, sort of more tapered here because as the as the cheekbones are a little bit more prominent and the face is longer that sort of changes it takes away this roundness that was previously there and it kind of goes in more of an angle at the cheeks. And what's really quite surprising to me as well is that even the chin has changed. You'll see here that it's a lot straighter. Here it's, it's quite round and there's probably no flat area. It's quite pointed but a round point. But here it's already sort of flattening out at the bottom. Again the angles here as well and the jaws are a little bit more pronounced here. That's because my bottom jaw is disproportionately stronger than my top jaw. So my bottom jaw muscles are extremely and unreasonably strong and I guess that since I've been having difficulty sort of chewing, eating etc because of the bite turbos, the expander and whatnot, those muscles have been working extra hard and so I believe they, they did actually maybe grow a little bit. And then if you move on to this picture here, what it is today or yesterday, again the face is comparably quite long here. That expression I've got looks so gone <laughs> just with the mouth open and everything but fine whatever. And um, So the face is still longer than compared to this one here. Here. It's a bit more rectangular again, um, especially because of the jaw muscles. But I would say actually the jaw muscles in the second picture are more at an angle than they are here. Again, maybe that's due to the lighting or probably as well because I've got the bite turbos in. Again, it's lengthening the face. So it's sort of changing the angle that we can see from the skin over the cheek hollow area, sort of stretching out there. And I would say that the chin is again quite flat. That flatness is maybe even extended a little bit compared to the second picture. But absolutely, if we compare the first picture to the last one, there's definitely a flatter chin area here. And then if we take a look at what it's like on the side, I haven't had the jaw surgery to move my jaws forwards and backwards yet. So it would stand to reason then that the top to mid of the face is still quite flat again because my top jaw is underdeveloped it doesn't stick out far enough so it's quite flat in the, the upper two thirds of my face. Here I would say that my bottom jaw looks quite defined and it looks quite long so it's quite obvious here that the bottom jaw is significantly larger or more prominent than the top jaw. Here as my chin starts to flatten out and the muscles on the side grow and strengthen. I would say there's less definition here actually. Again, probably due to the lighting, it was um, brighter in this picture than it was in this one, but I would say the jawline is, is less um, defined than it was before I had any procedures done at all. 
And then what's interesting here and kind of unexpected is that the bottom jaw actually looks less prominent here. It looks a bit more receded than it does in the first picture. And although that's unexpected for me to see, it actually makes sense when I think about it. Because I'm having all these procedures and the braces and everything, my jaws and my teeth are moving and they're changing all the time. I've, again, I've got a lot of stress in my face and in these muscles. So, and I don't have really any kind of bite either. I only have the, the two turbo bites that make any sort of contacted off of chewing. So my face is kind of confused let's say, and I'm finding that the position of both my top and bottom jaws is changing all the time as the, the alignment of the teeth and the jaws change. So at the moment, I have actually been finding that my bottom jaw is um, like the muscles are pulling it back too much because of the, again, the tension and the stress in those, in those muscles, which is actually not that comfortable um, and I am regularly seeing an osteopath who really helps me with that kind of stuff. For me physio isn't helpful at all but the osteopathy is definitely more helpful so just as a tip for you. So yeah it does make sense then um, that the bottom jaw looks a little bit further back in this bottom picture and again it looks very rounded compared to this picture here taking into account even for the different lighting. Much rounder here again in those muscles that have really been growing and straining even more and a lot less definition on the side as well. This kind of back angle of the jaw is disappearing as time goes on. So a lot of changes to the face there already in this relaxed position. We can also take a look at it when I still got my mouth closed but I'm smiling. Um, here we're missing the set of pictures from after I had the expansion but before I had the braces. I obviously just forgot to take those kind of pictures there so apologies for that. But again if we take a look at the lips here first of all you can see here if you pay close attention to the shadows of the lips you can already see even from the front view that my bottom jaw still out further than the top jaw. Um, again we've got this kind of roundness of the, the cheeks here and the, the pointiness of the chin. Whereas now my lips don't look comfortable. That looks like a very strained, very forced way of smiling and that is how it feels as well. Again predominantly because of those bite turbos just making my lips physically further apart. And we can also tell here as well that the bottom jaw is more receded. It doesn't look quite as far, far forward as the top jaw here. And again, the chin is very flat here as compared to here. I would guess that the reason for that is that as the muscles on the side grow and get stronger, then it just grows in these areas to make the chin appear more flat. So I think the bone probably is fairly pointy and then it's just the muscles that are making it look more flat now. That would be my guess. And again, the face is generally longer here because of the bite turbos. And taking a look at the side as well, very similar from that previous picture or the, the previous picture set where the bottom jaw looks much more defined and prominent here. And then this picture, it looks more round and less defined and a lot more flat all the way down. And then uh, I think the last picture set I have for you here is when my mouth is open and smiling. Now what's interesting if I just take a look here, when I smile with my mouth open the chin is a little bit pointier than it is when my face is relaxed probably because of the way that the, the skin and the muscles pull. So I would say it's still definitely pointier here, a little bit less so there's some roundening on the middle picture and then here that's interesting, you can see that the muscle on the right side is bigger than the one on the left side and that is how it feels as well when I move it and in terms of the functioning, the right side does definitely seem stronger than the left. So that's interesting to see that also reflected in these pictures. Something that I forgot to mention as well actually, which you can see in these pictures, but it's actually easier to see here, is that on my left side, the right side in these pictures, the gap between the jaws is just growing and growing and growing. That to me actually kind of makes sense though because when we look at this picture of my palette, you can see that if we look at the teeth straight on, the palette actually is tilted. It's kind of got this 
this roundness to it it's it's rotated at an angle so it'll be interesting to see when we do the surgical planning i imagine then that we'll probably do some rotation of the jaw as well the reason why you can't really see it here i would guess that it's because even though my bite is not ideal there is contact all the way from the back of the right side to the front and to the back of the left side so whenever i have my teeth together that's essentially keeping them in that position but then in this picture, even though I don't have the bite turbos, I did have them in for seven months before. So that started to allow the teeth and the jaws to kind of be in whatever position they wanted to be in. And then another six months here, or uh, I one, one year in total, just over a year, it's grown a lot more here as well. The, the gap has gotten bigger. I'm not concerned about that, but it is, again, just something interesting to note. And maybe it's also, again, making some unevenness in the jaw muscles. So you can see also in these pictures as well where this side, if you look at the brackets of my braces, it's lower on this side than it is on this side. So it's not as easy to see, but it is certainly still visible if you look for it. In these pictures, I would say when I'm smiling with my mouth open, there's not so much difference that you can see in the, uh, in the cheek areas. They do still look a little bit more squirrely, hibernating for the winter, you know, storing food in the cheeks. <laughs> they, they look a little bit chubbier here than here, but again, because of the length of the face and stretching out that cheek area I think that makes sense and then from the side as well quite similar what's interesting is you can see in the shadows here that it's like the bottom of the jaw and then the chin there's a bit of this this dimple here similarly here you can see that quite a lot it's actually not very flattering <laughs> and then here it's a lot less so again because this larger muscle on that side has sort of um, expanded a little bit which gets rid a little bit of this little bump that we see previously. All right, so I hope then that you can see quite clearly how my face has indeed changed with um, the palatal expansion and with only six months of braces. I would say that's quite significant changes there. As I say, I'm only just over a year into this full process, which I am budgeting five years for. So there will be a lot more changes to come. So if you're in a similar situation, if you're in a similar phase of your journey or even just four years into the five years, if you're not happy with the way that your face is looking don't worry because in another six months it's going to look different as well i see a lot of people in peer support groups that are really really hung up about how their face looks only two days after surgery where they're gonna be very puffy and swollen they're concerned about the gaps in the midline and things like that when they're only a couple of months into their braces that's all gonna change don't worry about it as my doctors and surgeons have said to me, it will get worse before it gets better. So I'm absolutely fine with the way that my face is changing. And yeah, I hope then that demonstrates things well for you. Let me know in the comments down below if you've also taken similar progress pictures yourself and what kind of changes you have or haven't noticed in your own journey. I'm also interested to see, you know, the speed at which um, you've experienced those changes. As I say, links in the description down below to all of the uh, videos that I've mentioned in this one. If you enjoyed the video, if you found it useful and helpful please do give it a like share it with someone that you think might also enjoy it and again comment down below in those experiences that you've had also any questions that you may have for me thanks a lot for watching and i will see you again soon bye